is Dale D'Antoni here. Welcome to the Sofa Sessions. D'Antoni. Welcome back to the Sofa Session Podcast. This week we have on William Lyon. He is a competitive eater. He has ran marathons. He has done the Ironman downtown. He has done a bodybuilding competition. Um, he's really big into health and fitness, but his main thing as of right now is uh, competitive eating. He has his own YouTube channel called Lion Around, uh, where he does these crazy, outlandish, amazing um, food competitions, whether that be actual competitions in front of people or like home challenges or whatever. Um, he did. He went to Coney Island to do the big hot dog eating contest, and his main goal for this is just to kind of give back to the local restaurants that are closing down due to like the fast food places and just like the big corporation places. Because majority of the time, when you find these people that have local restaurants, they do it because they love it. They don't necessarily do it for the money. I mean, obviously they do do it for the money, but their most important thing is like the service and then just the quality of the food. Whereas if you go to a fast food place the service isn't always the best and the food isn't always the best either so he's really trying to give back to these local people that are really you know working hard grinding to be you know uh, above the water type of restaurant um, within the last couple of years I know a lot of places in Augusta have closed down like his main goal is to just give back and um, almost shout out these restaurants that are just doing really good work in the area whether that be in Augusta, North Augusta, Evans, Aiken, any of that kind of stuff. Um, so, yeah, this was such a fun episode. Don't forget to check him out. Go subscribe to him. Follow him. Don't forget to subscribe and all that all that kind of stuff. And uh, thank you guys for listening, and we'll see you in the next one. Done the news a couple times, uh, but nothing like this. Not not like this setup. This is pretty sweet. Yeah, I saw you on the, on the news, like, early on. I feel like you haven't been doing it for that long, have you? Nah, uh... This was something that just kind of happened this year. Mm -hmm. I um, kind of played around with it a couple of years ago yeah. um, and discovered I, I could eat a lot. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, actually, there, there's, a, there's a kind of a famous um, YouTuber, Beard Meets Food, that mm -hmm. was in the States uh, kind of touring around, and he came to South Carolina yeah. to do a, a contest in, in Easily. Uh, at a place called Skins yeah, Hot Dogs. I, yeah, I watched that video. It's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> and that, that's the only one that's blown up. Uh, I wish the other content would, would do as well. But, yeah. um, you know, Beard was there, so I was like, ah, oh, I got to go try that. And yeah. uh, it kind of just took off from there. Um, Coney Island was, was kind of just a, a, a bucket list type of thing. Mm -hmm. And then that got serious, you know, looking forward to going back next year potentially. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just, just kind of been a, a weird, crazy journey. Yeah, what do you mean by, like, Coney Island? Is there a thing there? Yeah, there, uh, so kind of like the Super Bowl of competitive eating is, oh, is uh, the, the Nathan's famous hot dog eating contest on uh, Independence Day up in Coney Island. Yeah. Uh, they, they give you cool jerseys. They, you know, ESPN is there. Um, Dang. And, and uh, <laughs> as a competitive eater, it's, it's kind of something that, I guess we all try to get to. Um, it was just it was, it was a, a surreal moment to qualify for that one and go up there and, and you know be on the same stage as you know people that I look up to. Yeah, yeah. That, what's the one dude that eats a lot of the hot dogs? The, like yeah, the really famous Joey dude? Chestnut. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was the first year in like two decades he wasn't there. I was like, dang it, man, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm here and you're not here. What? <laughs> But still, to be you know up there with people like James Webb and and and, and Esper mm -hmm. and uh, Pat Bertoletti, who won this year, yeah, I mean, it was it was an incredible experience. Thanks. So you do competitive yeah. eating just yeah. for everybody at home. Yeah, I, I competitive <laughs> eat, speed eating. Um, there's not a whole lot of contests down here in the South. Yeah. So uh, I do a, a lot of fun stuff at home, but also traveling around. Whoever has a a, a, a food challenge, if you're a restaurant, you know. I, I started up a channel mostly for the purpose of trying to do like promotional stuff, trying mm -hmm. to drive in business, but also just because I love food. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Have, I, th I was watching some of them and I was wondering if any of the local restaurants have asked you to like come and like review their food and like you have like a little challenge that you do. Yeah. Just so it's like a promotion for them. Yeah. So. Uh, kind of where that came from a couple of years ago when I first discovered you know this this weird ability uh, to <laughs> eat a lot uh, uh i would 
you know, go around and, and hit up these challenges. There, some of them are marked, some of them aren't. I, I would use Randy Santel's uh, website, foodchallenges.com, to kind of see where they are. And I would go and I would eat these big meals, and it was always great people that were at these restaurants and the little hole in the wall places. And I would feel kind of bad, you know, because mm-hmm. I would. I would eat all this food, take all these services. Some of them came with cash prizes and a t-shirt. Oh, and I didn't really have, I'm not Mr. Beast or anything. Yeah. I don't have anything <laughs> to give back. So part of the channel was my attempt of like trying to give something back through uh, social media platforms, through Ooh. influence and trying to drive in business. Because every time I go to these restaurants, they're run by the the most big hearted people, hard working people, and they're grinding and they're making razor thin profits. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I'm just trying to get like some people out of like the drive through lane and going to, you know, these diners. Cause yeah. it's, it's great. Um, yeah. Yeah. Dang. And, and you said it's like an ability. Did you have to, <laughs> <Yeah>. <clears throat> did you have to like practice or is it like a natural thing? At first, <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm kind of like into fitness a little bit mm-hmm. done you know, marathons and the Augusta half Ironman and stuff like that. Oh, and I, I love, you know, dieting and exercise. It's just part of my lifestyle. So for my birthday a couple of years ago, I just kind of told my wife, I wonder what it'd be like to just kind of let the dog off the leash and <laughs> give myself an <laughs> epic cheat day. Uh, so <laughs> I laid out a banquet in front of me and never thought I'd be able to eat all of it. It was just something for fun mm-hmm. and wound up eating all of it. And I was like, holy crap uh so that kind of started from there mm-hmm. and then there was a, a challenge down in metter georgia so i went down there and that was my first challenge at papa buck's barbecue shout out it was this you know four or five pound barbecue sandwich mm-hmm. it wasn't wasn't that hard and i just you know kind of from there was just like i, I guess i can eat a lot uh dang the thing <laughs> is is that it's actually it's, it's tough on your body too. yeah that's what i was gonna say like yeah. how long are you in the bathroom for after yeah <laughs> it's a it's a tough it's actually just like little doled out payments oh, okay <laughs> yeah it's not like uh actually it, some some of the bigger challenges i'm like oh man I, I i out of my way gotta go you know all that you know it it has to go somewhere and yeah it, it pushes down so uh, <laughs> Some challenges, like yeah, got to go to hit the hit the head, but um, you got to hit the reload button or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, people ask me, you know, it, how it, I, I'm I fast a lot in between challenges. Oh, really? I kind of eat like a like a like a <clears throat> snake. Like you know, they eat a lot at once and then they mm-hmm. just like do nothing for a while. <laughs> So uh, it's a lot of protein <laughs> shakes and you know just low calorie stuff in between yeah. challenges and a lot of cardio. Uh, Dang, that's yeah. crazy. It's, yeah, that's good. You probably do cardio. Or you'd be like four hundred pounds, dude. <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, I feel like uh, that treadmill. You know, <laughs> just spending hours and hours a week. You know, I have a lot of treadmill thoughts, and mm-hmm. I still work. Um, yeah. So. Uh, you know, I work swing shift, so trying to get up at two forty-five, three o'clock oh, in the dang. morning, um, and having two little girls. You know, I, I'm I'm just a regular dude. I, I I don't get paid for any of this. I just kind of do it on the side. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty cool. That's a lot to do, man. It's. I mean, I'm I'm a hobbyist. You <laughs> yeah. Know, so, uh, I I just like doing crazy. Who knows what I'm going to be into in a couple of years? Yeah. Uh, How long do you think you'll be doing like the food eating, the competition stuff? The competition stuff. Uh, I mean, I. I almost did one up in New Jersey, uh, but it's it's just, you know, life kind of traveling with kids and wife yeah. and taking time off of work. I'd love to do more content because I'm a really competitive person. Mm-hmm. But uh, I signed a contract with MLE, which kind of you know, restricts me from competing in a lot of local contests. Oh, dang. What's uh, MLE? Uh, Major League Eating. Oh, dang. If you okay. want to get up there and compete uh, at Coney Island, you got to sign with them and mm. kind of abide by their strictures. Oh, so uh, that, that kind of limits me to what I can and can't compete in. I can still do food challenges. I can mm. still create, you know, all the content. But contests uh, are, are a little limited. That yeah. That kind of stinks. But, you know, dang. comes why to is the territory. It, why is it so, like, uh, Why are there so many restrictions, restrictions? I guess. Yeah. It's it's uh, a bunch of lawyer stuff and I just you know, I I just say yes sir <laughs> and uh <laughs> they they did a lot to um get me up to Coney Island. They mm-hmm. you know, paid for my flight, paid for a couple of nights in a hotel, 
stuff like there are pros and cons with, mm-hmm. with signing with them. So in the meantime, it's it's not too much of a bummer. It's a little bit because I'm a really competitive person. Yeah. But as long as I'm still allowed to, you know, what I'm most passionate about is trying to give back to awesome local small restaurants mm-hmm. through, you know, social media. So as long as I'm still able to do that and, and grow my channel and, you know, cause some some good change for awesome places like that representing uh lily coffee tea and bread today uh, hey that's what's up they're uh downtown um great vietnamese food um and a lot of places around the csra are contacting me just wanting to make fun little content uh, oh dang yeah. so you're getting you're getting texts and calls all the time then huh uh, sometimes yeah <laughs> like like i said I, i'm no mr beast <laughs> but, and uh you you're know mr feast <laughs> mr. that's great man you just came up with that dang see that's what i need i need that creativity yeah <laughs> it doesn't come through in the content people tell me i'm I, your stuff is way too dry they want my wife to be in the in the videos way more she's yeah. way more animated than yeah. i am <laughs> all i got is the eating thing yeah you know? so do you, like do you get nervous to like kind of like act out or is that just how you kind of are i guess i, I want to make better content uh-huh. um so that I, I can help out the businesses more if that makes sense yeah because the better the content, the more people watch it, the more people watch it, the mm-hmm. more people want to go to these great little places. And a lot of times, you know, we're on our tablets, we're on our phones or, or laptops, and we don't really watch advertising anymore. Mm-hmm. A lot of the content that we see, you know, is what we're consuming. So uh, if people see awesome content about a local restaurant, maybe that that's the commercial right there. Yeah. So my drive to like be more animated Mm -hmm. or have better voiceovers, editing skills, that kind of stuff is to make better content for the people I'm trying to help out. Yeah. Eating eight pounds of food. Yeah. That that's awesome. (laughs) But if I could just get some more people in the door of these places, cause there, 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 there was one that just shut down recently an awesome, uh, vegan restaurant, Soka, uh, Uh, near Walton way extension. Okay. So my, my whole drive is, yeah, just to, help out these awesome little business owners yeah i feel like a lot of places downtown are closing or a lot of have yeah at least in augusta yeah vance's uh bakery just shut down yeah. too yeah they they had great if you had a sweet tooth late mm-hmm. at night you know a great you know uh dessert menu that they offered yeah. awesome like house cocktails but mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I know uh, my wife and I are trying to pinch pennies as well, and going out can be a little bit of a splurge. Yeah. But my whole thing is people are still using, you know, fast food and uh, uh, going to these places. So it's like just a little bit more. You can go sit down and have Mm -hmm. service, and the the food is good. Um, The people are friendly. Yeah. Uh, That's just kind of the message I'm trying to get out there. Yeah, I feel like COVID ruined that a lot. It did. Because, like, you couldn't go inside. You could only go in drive-thrus. And it hit, you know, little guys the hardest. Yeah. Uh, It was was terrible. Um, Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, every time I see, like, a local place closed down, I always see people in the comments, like, oh, that place was so good to eat. Like, like, you never really hear anything bad about, like, local places like that. No. It's always good. I, I, I Honestly... It's, I was thinking about it the other day, how it, there, there's no way it can be a coincidence how all these people uh, came from struggle mm-hmm. and, and they have such big hearts and all they want to do is just make good food for their customers. Yeah. It's, it's nothing about like, it. of course it's profit driven because they want to stay in mm-hmm. business. But uh, I mean, it's, it's incredible. I, I love every <laughs> local restaurateur I've, I've had the opportunity to work with has just been incredible people Mm -hmm. um and i think it starts there if you have that then of course you're going to want to like make good food and they're proud of their food you know they they slave over you know these menus and and they want to be able to give their customers like awesome can i cuss like uh, like, yeah like kick-ass food like (laughs) like, kick-ass just like man so yeah you're going to see those reviews on you know uh, places that are locally owned Mm -hmm. Um, yeah yeah, I don't ever. Have you ever done like a McDonald's challenge, or do you stray away from like the fast food places uh, for fun? I, I like to throw in home challenges every now and then. I just did a, I don't know where this idea came from, but I wanted to do like a, a pregnancy craving challenge because mm-hmm. I've seen like all these crazy combinations, 
Uh, the biggest one I saw was pickle and ice cream. So really, that's a weird one. <laughs> it's weird. It was weird. So I made a, a gallon of pickle ice cream, and it was awful. It was just <laughs> terrible. But I, I, I wouldn't, you know, if uh, another part of it too is growing the channel. So if I have a bigger influence, then I can mm -hmm. have more of an effect at, on local restaurants. So yeah. if people want to see crazy stuff like that, I'll throw something like that in there every now and then. Mm -hmm. um, I'll go do a McDonald's. Full menu challenge or yeah. whatever. Yeah, I saw you do the cereal one too. Yeah, that one was fun. <laughs> it was a, uh, it was kind of like being circulated a couple of years ago. I might have been late on that one, but some bigger influencers were doing a gallon of milk and three boxes of cereal. Mm -hmm. That one was, uh, <laughs> it was, it was, it's fun at home, you know. There's, yeah. There's no pressure, so that's, <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's another idea. If you ever saw that movie Matilda, where that. The, the big kid, Bruce, ate that giant chocolate cake. <laughs> I want to try that one at home one day, too. I love cake, man. So, yeah. yeah. What's your favorite cake? Right now, I, I've been pretty basic over the last year and just going chocolate, but a good carrot cake. And uh, oh, dang, yeah. Bull Weevil downtown makes this uh, strawberry cake I'm a huge fan of. Yeah, I've heard Bull Weevil's pretty good with like man, their oh, desserts, man. too. Dude, it's, it's just... <laughs> I, I think people don't like the word moist. What about like it's they're saturated, <laughs> they're damp. Cake. Yeah, you don't want a damp cake. I don't. Know. But yeah, good stuff down there. Yeah, some man. people get freaked out by the word moist. Moist is a bet. I always, I never like the word kumquat for some reason. <laughs> kumquat. What is that's a uh, that looks like the green thing, right? It looks like a pickle. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Actually, I don't know what a kumquat is. Uh, it's a fruit. It's a oh yeah, it's like a yellowish green thing. Yeah, I can't afford it. That, that's why. I, yeah, yeah I can, that's way why out I, of my yeah. budget. <laughs> yeah, you, you'll find it at uh, Whole Foods. No, I'm I'm down there at Walmart getting apples and bananas. <laughs> so uh, a kumquat is a group of s small angiosperm fruit-bearing trees in the family. I don't even know. Does but it look it, like a papaya. It looks like that. That's what it is. Oh, it's like it looks like a long orange. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know, I don't know, but yeah, with that that one video that you got is like thirty thousand views on it. The yeah. one we did with um, skins. Yeah. Did did the restaurant reach out and say that they had been getting more people coming in because of that video? Skins is uh, they're they're kind of like a legacy <clears throat> restaurant. They've been open oh, for God, I don't even know uh, eighty years, something close to that. Oh, so dang. they had. They've got thirty or forty thousand followers on Facebook. It got a lot of shares. Mm -hmm. and no, I, ha I haven't really heard from them. I know I want to go back if it ever gets broken. I've Got to go defend my title. Yeah, I have some some weird thing about like record challenges uh -huh. in South Carolina. Um, <clears throat> like they it needs to be a South Carolinian. You know, <laughs> yeah, that, that has it. There's <laughs> there's a, a grilled cheese record challenge that's uh, in Charleston. Mm -hmm. that uh, is held by a fellow competitive eater, George Chigger. Um, great guy, but, like, I want, I want to go – I want that record. Yeah. <laughs> That's my home state. I got <laughs> yeah. to go represent. Yeah. Um, but, no, Skins hasn't uh, reached out, but it's okay because they're doing really well. They've mm -hmm. got, like, four or five locations, I think. Oh, dang. Up. Yeah. Dang. And their menu is Chili Dogs. And I think that's it. That's how you know it's good. <laughs> when there's like a couple things on the menu. Yeah. It's like we know we know how to do chili dogs. Yeah. yeah are, there, good. are there any other restaurants that have uh hit you up after you left? Yeah. Uh El Rey. God I love El Rey in Augusta. Man. And their owner, Ramiro, is a wild man. <laughs> love Ramiro Galvin. Just like look him up. He's posting all the time. He's a hundred percent authentic. He doesn't give any craps i'm i'm i'm, I'm hesitant to curse <laughs> Dude, you, can, you can say whatever yeah. you want okay. he, he, give, he gives no shits uh <laughs> he and he is an amazing guy just full of love huge heart hilarious and innovative i yeah. mean el ray is is coming out with uh, amazing things all the time their birria pizza is delicious they just mm. uh rolled out a margarita soft serve machine. They've got a couple food trucks that roll around the CSRA. Oh dang! Love going there. Um, Fat Man's downtown was just down there to eat. God knows how many pounds of fried chicken. <laughs> um, they're they're uh, they're wonderful people. And uh, shout out to the, the the Love Augusta guys who are always helping me find these amazing restaurant tours. So I, I mean, I've got 
a, a lot on my plate to go check out, and I'm I'm really excited. <laughs> Pun intended. About, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 there's a lot of food puns. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you never really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So are you from South Carolina? Yeah. Uh, born and raised North Augusta. Went to school in Augusta. Hey, dang. Yeah. Um, uh, got my degree up in Greenville, South Carolina. And, uh, yeah, I work out at the, the bomb plant out at SRS. The um, bomb plant. Oh, okay. Do yeah. you work out there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've been Dang. out there for seven years, uh, work shift out there. My wife um been married six years. She is a nurse, and she kind of hops around between AU and university. mm mm-hmm. Um, so, That's but yeah, we live down there by the snow cap in North Augusta. Oh, dang. I, yeah. I'm from North Augusta too. I went to North Augusta high school. Oh, for so, real? Yeah. Yeah. Dang, man. All yeah. right. Shoot. Yeah. What year did you graduate? Uh, 2018. Nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. So you, you, you don't have a, a 19 on your birth year, do you? Um, or did you just barely squeak in there? What do you mean? Yeah. I was like 17 when I Oh, uh, so graduated. you were born in 2001? I was born in 2000. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you you, you kind of like cringe a little bit when people like uh, nineteen eighty seven or is that what do you mean? I don't know. It's just like <laughs> the, the the funny thing now. Like oh, you were born in the nineteen hundreds. Oh know, yeah. You know, no, you. I I missed it, man. I missed the nineteen hundreds. Two thousand is a cool birth year. Yeah, I don't ever forget what age I am. I guess. Yeah, man. <laughs> it's always easy to think of, you know. That's, yeah. <laughs> Hey, don't 24 this year. Yeah. <laughs> 25 next year. <laughs> yeah, man. 2000 was a that was a cool year. Shoot. I yeah. Was, I was going through puberty. It was rough times. Actually, oh, dang. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> rough times for my parents. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe 2000 wasn't a good year. <laughs> yeah. Oh, everyone was terrified, man. Yeah. They thought the world was going to come to an end. Yeah, I saw. Like, was that like a pretty big deal? I was still pretty little, but yeah, I remember there was a little hysteria going yeah. on. Yeah. We were... We, Mom and dad actually let us stay up till midnight. Uh, I don't, I don't know why, but everyone was just kind of like fingers crossed. Is, mm-hmm. Are all the lights going to go out? And yeah. When they didn't, it was like, oh, crap! I got to go back to work tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh well. Dang. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm from North Augusta as well. I only moved to Augusta a couple of years ago, like 2020. Well, a year ago. Yeah. So, yeah. It's a. Uh, I mean. I've I've tried a couple times to get out of Augusta. I know people like to you know hate on Augusta. Mm. It's I I mean I keep on coming back though. It's, yeah, it's it's not a bad place to be. Mm-hmm. It's it's all right and a lot of jobs coming up and there's a lot of opportunity here and a lot of great restaurants, a lot of yeah. cool activities to get into, um, a lot of cool disc golf courses. Yeah, right. yeah, there've been a lot popping up in the area. Yeah. I remember that one at the rec was there forever before yeah. disc golf got even big, but now there's a lot everywhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Used to go down there and play with my dog all the time. Oh yeah. There's one out at Patriots. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah that's out in Grovetown. But yeah, I like I like North Augusta a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's, I think it's kind of close people, to everything, but yeah, not not big time. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, and it's a little bit. I think it's a little bit nicer than Augusta too. Is is. It's getting <laughs> like hoity toity in the last, you know, five or six years. Sometimes my wife and I, you know, we got two little girls, they're getting big. We're kind of wanting to upgrade, but dang, you know, the housing market, we, yeah, we that's feel another like thing squeezed out. Like, yeah, man, we have to move out to the country or something. <laughs> it's like three bed, two bath is like $250,000. 250, <laughs> shoot, if you're lucky, yeah, <laughs> man, yeah, but. I don't know. Those are the times we'll just move out to the country or to yeah. a high crime rate or something like that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yeah, moving out to high crime rates pretty good. You could just eat them if they come and try and like take your stuff. Yeah, you just eat them. You know, the girls grow <laughs> up tough. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you were ever at, at like a like a really nice uh, restaurant and they had human on the menu, do you think you would try it? Not on camera. Not on camera. <laughs> <laughs> no. I don't know. You would man. edit that part out of the video. It would depend. <laughs> Do you ever see that movie City Slickers, where uh, um, the guy was like, "Look, if I die first, you know, I volunteer myself so you guys don't, don't <laughs> starve." I would want to know. Okay, what are the what were the circumstances? <laughs> you know, w- w- was this like like a human farm unethical? No, but uh, okay, was this guy like? Uh, did he have it coming? No, I mean, I, 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 I shouldn't even joke around about it. No, I would not eat human. But Dang. I am down for like. If I see something on a menu that's weird, like mm-hmm. I've never had it, like I, I want that. Yeah. Uh, at work, uh, I shouldn't say at work. There were a couple <laughs> of buddies uh, that were curious about, 
you know what uh what are they called rocky mountain oysters about like uh bull balls yeah yeah so just went down to the butcher and just got some of those let's see what this tastes like uh you know had to you know deep fry it to mm-hmm. mask the flavor a yeah. little bit but you know yeah i'm I, i'm an adventurous man she uh, <laughs> yeah not human <laughs> So how do they taste? Do they taste kind of weird? Yeah, it tastes like organ meat. Like if you'd uh, put it in front of me and not told me what it was, I'd have guessed like liver or something like that. A oh, little minerally, but just, you know, yeah, like organ meat. Yeah. I never tried in like organs, I don't think. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, <laughs> I think we only started because they're cheaper than like prime cuts. So yeah. we'll see like... Uh, and the liver king? Liver king. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not built like him though. I got to start eating that. Well, he eats a lot of balls, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah, and he does a lot of steroids, so. Does he? Yeah. Nah, that's, he's, he's natty, man. That's nah, what he, he says. Yeah, but it, it came out that he was doing like $10,000 $10, worth of I steroids on that. that. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think that his abs are implants? I've thought about that, but I don't know. How are they always just like poking out? I don't know. They're always looking at me, though. It kind of freaks <laughs> me out. <laughs> yeah, I, there, there's something enticing about his videos, and then you, you're left with a lot of questions afterwards. Yeah. You're like, why did I watch that whole thing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I never... I never liked him, um, but yeah, I think what he did was kind of crazy. I think you, if you're gonna like have a presence on social media, you have to kind of have a crazy cartoonish persona. Yeah, and he definitely has that. Yeah, he did. I will say he was good at that, but like, he was just straight up lying about the supplements oh, yeah. he was selling and be like, "Oh, if you eat like this, you can achieve this." That's and, one thing that pisses me off. Yeah, yeah, yeah cause, I mean. <laughs> It, 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 to to kind of like so like that false narrative and yeah. then people people take it in yeah, and, and, and they, then they, they, they internalize it and think that something's wrong with them if yeah. they don't achieve the same results mm-hmm. so you know <laughs> shame on you yeah uh-huh. and yeah. then in, in his apology video he was talking about he did it for all the men that like was suicidal and depressed but like he probably end up making more men or like more boys like yeah. suicidal or depressed because they weren't achieving that yeah. when he was doing, taking steroids and he wasn't coming clean about it. Maybe just be real and, yeah. and, and talk about like depression as a man. <laughs> yeah. But let's not talk. Men just don't talk about that, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I, I wish, I wish people like, especially influencers in the fitness industry or, mm-hmm. or, or, you know, food influencers or whoever were a little more transparent, but, Unless you're like at a certain level, it's it's like career suicide, right? Ooh, yeah. um, I mean, right? There, there's there's a lot of taboo things that, like by necessity, you're just not going to talk about because, Ooh. oh no, I'm not going to lose all my influence. I yeah, don't know. I don't know. You know, yeah. me with uh, 850 <laughs> followers, I, I'm not there. So yeah, <laughs> I, could, I I pretty much have the freedom to do whatever I want. But yeah, I. I can understand the pressure yeah I, I get that but i think also if i was in that position i would want to tell the truth as much as possible yeah because i feel like then that in return would i don't know it would just do better yeah because i feel like a lot lately past probably couple years in social media there's been a lot of liars a lot of people doing some shady things behind closed mm-hmm. doors and so then like, it gives them the opportunity to come yeah. out with an apology video yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah I, th- I think like authenticity and like just the natural way to go would probably be breathtaking yeah. or fresh breath, fresh breath there. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, so take me for example, like a lot of my, con- not, not a whole lot of my content does that well, but if it really plummets, it's the stuff that's about dieting and exercising. Mm-hmm. Uh, like no one wants to see that. So there, there's kind of like, like feedback that you get as an influencer like, oh, well, no one wants to, they just want to see you eat. Like, or if you're a big rip dude, they just want to mm-hmm. see you you lift, you know, um, and live in this fantasy world of, you know, you can have your cake and eat it too, you know, no pun intended. Yeah. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, like, I, I try to put it out there because, yeah, I want to be transparent. I want to say, like, look, there, there's no such thing as this unicorn of uh, 
fast metabolism or good genetics or you, you stay this little, but you can eat, you know, 20 pounds of lasagna or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like I, I fast for days and I do cardio, but then that content, you know, just plummets. No one wants to see it. Yeah. They only want to see you eat a lot. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like this feedback, like, okay, no one wants to know the truth, mm -hmm. but, but they do want to know the truth. And I don't know. So, yeah. Yeah. So to stay as small as what you're saying, you, you work out a lot. Like, I, it just doesn't come naturally, like a lot of people would say. Yeah. It, it's, it's weird. People actually get, uh, you know, <laughs> they, call, they call bullshit on this one. But it's like uh, I tell people I actually lose weight whenever I do, like, competitive eating because I can't really prioritize getting enough calories in, protein, and mm -hmm. lifting. Whenever I'm in the gym, I prioritize cardio, and then I fast a lot. So I, I tend to kind of, like, lose muscle and shrink down, like, 10 or 15 pounds oh, as opposed dang. to – when I'm not, when I'm just like happy and lifting and jogging and whatever, I, you know, I'm, I, you know, put on a little bit of weight, but yeah, uh, doing, I can only do a challenge like once every four or five days to kind of get my body back and clear out my system. Yeah. Um, I, I guess I could do more, but you know, clothes are expensive. <laughs> 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 Don't want to blow up or anything. Yeah. So. so how long do you fast in between? Like, Three, three or four days. Oh, dang. You'll go three or four days without eating? It's, uh, I say fasting. It's, it's like I'll, I'll super calorie restrict like five to 800 calories a day. Oh, dang. I have some like cottage cheese in the morning and I have a protein shake right before bed. That's about it. Dang, that's still pretty good though. It's, it's tough. It, I get kind of moody. Yeah. Mm. He asked my wife. I get, <laughs> I get kind of grumpy when I get hungry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dang. So do you have that feeling of like you're about to throw up when uh, you're hungry? When, uh, after the food challenges, yeah. Uh, oh, but when I'm hungry, <clears throat> I, I just get kind of like, I don't know, antsy, you know, mm -hmm. like like fidgety. Yeah. Uh, and I have to have the things that help me out, like coffee or I got a snack on something, you know, carrots or some Smart Pop or something mm -hmm. that's locale. Yeah. Um, and every now and then, you know, I, I lose control. Last night, <laughs> last night everyone was in bed, and I was like, "Screw it!" I went down to the gas station, got me some Reese's peanut butter cups, Dang. got me a Snickers bar. I was dead you know, because <laughs> I'm not good at fasting. Yeah, I get hungry. You yeah, know, so. dang. Yeah, but yeah. When I'll go like a lot, like all day without eating, I feel like I have to throw up for some reason, or like yeah. I'll get that just hunger feeling. Mm -hmm. And I guess, and, and I guess I relate that with like having to throw up. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it, it I, I, yeah, I, I guess I understand what you mean. It, sometimes I'll, I'll feel a little sick. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, I don't know. When I was a little kid, and I would tell my parents that, you know, mom especially, she, I, her solution was always, you know, either go try to poop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or eat something or take a hot bath. That was her solution to like everything. Oh. I, I could have like a broken leg and she'd be like, go try to take a hot bath, you know? <laughs> go it try might to heal poop. it back together. <laughs> yeah. But I know what you mean. Sometimes your stomach hurts and it's because you haven't eaten enough. You know? Yeah, or like I'll get so, I haven't eaten in a while, it'll make me feel so bad I don't want to eat, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, no, I know what you mean. With two little girls, it's like, uh, it's 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 a struggle every meal time. Come on, you can do it. <laughs> Eat those strawberries. You can yeah, eat. and they're just not hungry because they haven't eaten all day, and mm -hmm. it's, they're getting fussy. Yeah, um, Dang. and same thing as adults. You know? Yeah, <laughs> if you miss your window, you ever done that where you just like you miss lunch, and then yeah. you realize it at like three p.m. like oh, a weird yeah. time, but you're not hungry, but you are hungry. Mm -hmm. You just don't feel like it. Yeah, and if you eat then, then, like, you're not going to get hungry till like, 8 or 9. Oh, and then the dog's <laughs> off the leash. Yeah. And then you just can't <laughs> stop eating. Yeah. Because at night, that's when, like, that's when, like, the demons come out of you. you right. Know? Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, you laugh, but my wife, she has she has to hide stuff from me. Really? Yeah. Damn. I mean, we, if we had, like, a safe or a lockbox, we mm -hmm. would just use that, but... There's peanut butter in my house that I, I don't know where it is. It's, it's like <laughs> hidden in a cabinet somewhere. She's got chocolate stored away. Um, she knows I get into the girls' snacks for school. Yeah. I, I got to have stuff hidden from me <laughs> because you're right. The, the demons come out in the middle of the night. I'll wake up at 1 a.m. and just go raid the refrigerator. Ooh. Go eat some, like, uh, what are some, like, uh, fruit, fruit gummies or something like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anything, man. Shoot, yeah. Anything. Yeah, or goldfish. 
Goldfish. Yep, those are a big <laughs> one. Goldfish, granola bars. Uh, and she hates it when I eat, like, her food, too. She gets stuff from the store, and then mm-hmm. it's good stuff, man. It's yeah. like a little... Little like uh, what, what is it? The the, the trail mix packs mm-hmm. with the granola and little chocolate bits in there. Oh, yeah, man. and she'll wake up and go for it, and it's gone. Son of a gun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah like women get to eat all the good stuff. We have to eat like steak and like chicken and stuff. Yeah, I know, man. Shoot, dieting. Yeah, <laughs> chicken, chicken. I don't know what I do without chicken, man. It's just, I mean, I don't. I I, I feel like I owe chicken as a race, just mm-hmm. like an apology. <laughs> For, for taking so many of y'all over mm-hmm. the years. Dang, and you're a murderer. I am, man. Well, apparently. I mean, <laughs> it's, I mean they're, they're cheap and high in protein, low calories. Yeah. I mean. How many chickens do you think you've eaten in your life? Like thousands. Really? Thousands. Dang. I mean, at Fat Man's the other day, I don't know how many, uh, 57 of those drumsticks. So what's that divided by <laughs> two? Oh there's, there's, there's 27, 20, I don't know. They're close to like 20, 28-ish. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's crazy. Yeah, that's you just murdered an entire like backyard stock. Sorry, chickens. <laughs> I mean, we did it. I mean, I'm, I'm a I'm a victim of our economy. You know, yeah. I, I'd love to eat other animals. Mm-hmm. Shrimp are great. They don't. Do they have feelings? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, that's another thing. Like, do these animals that are dying like they don't have consciousness like we do? So they don't really know don't, what's going on. Yeah, I uh, I don't know. I they they definitely act scared, um, but uh, I'm one of those people like I, I tried the vegan lifestyle for a mm-hmm. while because I I, I I felt I, I did kind of like feel bad like all oh, these things they feel pain and, and the animal farming industry is not very ethical and I can't afford like the <laughs> the the animals that are ethically the treated. free range stuff yeah. they get to go like they had a happy life or whatever yeah. <laughs> They they see the sunlight and have friends yeah. and live long happy life. I can't afford those ones. <laughs> uh, and 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 but man, you, you have to have such discipline and plan everything out for that mm-hmm. vegan lifestyle. I have such respect. They're doing hard work. And if you're a vegan, like thank you. Um, I can't do it. It's it's just man. Yeah, you got to be a freak to be a vegan. I feel like. Man, in a good way, in in a good way, yeah, Yeah. good freak, (laughs) yeah. Like I I appreciate the hard work you're doing, and thank you. And hey, uh, meatless Mondays, those are those are great. There's a lot of meatless options. Shoot, we do. Well, I was gonna say breakfast for dinner, but I guess eggs falls under that category. And bacon, yeah. Yeah, Uh, uh, I don't know. French toast. Well, French toast has eggs. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, shoot. yeah. It's like it's so hard it's to find everywhere. stuff that like doesn't have that is fully vegan. Yeah, I would go when I was doing that. I'd go to Taco Bell a lot and get myself a bean burrito. Whew, those were those were rough car rides. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. What I left the windows down a few times. I mean, I, I was at I was at Taco Bell a lot. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, they have you know vegan options at the store. <clears throat> yeah, it's expensive. Um, Maybe do a, a vegan challenge sometime with just, yeah. what would that be? I don't know, like a bunch of onions and carrots mm-hmm. and stuff. <laughs> bunch uh, of grass. I yeah. don't know. Yeah, yeah you probably get a lot of like negative comments from that. Just be like, oh, you're not a real man. You're vegan. Uh, but like then get any comments a good comment, I guess. Yeah. Well, I mean, there, there's that. <laughs> but I, I don't know. Like masculinity kind of changes as you get older. And yeah. Yeah kind of stop caring i say you stop caring but sometimes Mm -hmm. like i I super pay attention to the like the critical comments as opposed to the you know way to go Mm -hmm. if people say you know hey it would be better if you did this or that like oh okay because my goal is to make better content yeah um yeah do you get hate comments a lot or like what kind of comments do you normally have Nah, not really i'm not big enough to have hate haters (laughs) yeah do you need to post on tiktok then I've been trying. <laughs> I'm old. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out TikTok, Instagram, <clears throat> Snapchat, all these other ones. Like, uh, so I just turned 37. So of course, like Facebook and YouTube. Yeah. I'm still trying to figure out the newer ones, man. Dang. Yeah. But yeah. If you post on TikTok, no matter what it is, you'll get hate. For real. Yeah. I post tic- I post clips on there all the time with the podcast, and just people leave negative comments all the time and you say like that could be that's a good thing though sometimes like, i mean yeah because i don't really pay attention to them i think it's funny because like it's always a user that has 
like their account is private and they don't have like a profile picture so it's yeah. like are you even a real human i don't yeah. even know yeah so man yeah it's like i mean all, all you do is just that's how you that's how you get off is get on here and just yeah. like oh yeah crap <laughs> on someone's parade like, yeah uh, oh well yeah <laughs> what are you doing with your life what am I? Uh, or yeah. like, like that's what the commenter oh, is like yeah, doing. Yeah. Like, what are you doing with your life? You're not doing anything. Yeah, you're right. You're it's just hiding sad. behind this phone. Yeah, you know? like this. This is what you do. You just <clears throat> yeah. You could have just swiped up and gone Ooh. to the next, but no, you had to take forty seconds out of your day. <laughs> you took time. Like something I did triggered you so much. You yeah. could have just swiped up. Like, yeah. Uh, but you know what the algorithm is going to see that you hung out on this long enough to make a comment and mm. now you're going to get fed <laughs> stuff like this even more yeah yeah you interacted with this so you're going to get like five more videos of this yeah that's right <laughs> some people like to get triggered yeah. yeah yeah but some people just do it for fun like just trolling yeah too. just trolling yeah but that's why i like i react to them and i'm like i'm always like thank you so much and i'll put like a heart dude or yeah something. I, I do that too <laughs> yeah uh, the skins video the, the chili dog there was you know a couple on there and I just, I started to at first, like, mm. man, you don't know. I, 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 I do all this stuff for, and then, no, back it off. Oh, thank you for your, you know, your yeah. constructive criticism. I will take this to heart. And my goal is to make better. <laughs> you know, don't, don't go there. Don't, yeah. don't, don't go down low. Yeah, yeah. you got to kill him with kindness always. Kill him with kindness. That's right. Yeah. My fiance will always be like, let me write something back. And I'm like, <laughs> like, no, like, it's not that big of a deal. My wife is too. Yeah. She, she, she'll go through. Why would they say something like that? <laughs> they don't know. Here, give me your phone. I'm, yes, no, Sarah, Sarah, back it off. Man. Yeah, it's the exact yeah. same thing. Yeah. Women are feisty, man. Yeah. Especially when it comes to their man, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, they don't know you. <laughs> Who is this person? Let's look them up. There's got to be something where we can find this person. Like, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> back it down a little bit. It's all good. So when you're doing these kind of, um, like, these challenges, just, like, I guess out of your own pocket, is does it... Is it expensive? Does it add up, or do they let you do it for free? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, if you win, most of the time it's it's free. So there's that. Um, I've got so many T-shirts. I don't know what to do with them. Um, that's that's kind of cool too. Mm -hmm. There's gas money because you know a lot of them are hours and hours away. And back in the day when I was first getting into it, I would always like find something for the family to do, mm -hmm. and like go under the guise of like no we're not going to atlanta for a food challenge <laughs> we're going for the girls to see the aquarium if we happen to yeah. you know <laughs> <laughs> if we drive by it might as well stop yeah you know? <laughs> um so there, there's gas money there's uh but it's besides that it's it's not a terribly expensive hobby you know mm -hmm. i used to run a lot and do triathlon and stuff like that that's expensive and yeah but this is just, if I'm doing a food challenge at home, you know, yeah, you got to pay for groceries. Groceries are expensive. Yeah. But uh, it's, it's, it's not that bad. Training for, for Coney and, and getting into the, the hot dog eating contest. Yeah, that was, you know, like 20 bucks every time I wanted to do a little practice run. Yeah. Uh, you know, lining up 30 hot dogs with 30 buns to do a little practice run. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was watching your uh the hot dog videos. That's pretty pretty serious, man. You, Bro. you you take that stuff serious. Yeah. You don't joke around. Ooh, my wife was in the back just barking at me the whole time. <laughs> it's kind of hard to slow down. She's like, "No, you eat that. You eat that hot dog. You shove that thing in your mouth. Get it down your throat. Stop playing with it." <laughs> you know, and we'd be like recording out in the backyard. I'm, I'm sure my neighbors just thought we were crazy. They were looking us at us like, you know, the Griswolds, you know, just <laughs> like, "Oh my gosh." You can hear us from a, Sarah from a mile away. Get that hot dog in your mouth. Shove it down your throat. <laughs> Jeez, Sarah. So, yeah. I didn't know how else to practice for it. You just, mm -hmm. you know, eat as many hot dogs as you can as fast as you can. Yeah. So. Yeah, is there like a, it's like a certain way you do it? I saw in one video you said you're a bun dunker. Yeah. You got to you gotta dunk the buns. Uh, you got to soak them. That's, your, that's the way to get it down. Mm -hmm. It's all about just like getting it down as fast as you can. So, I guess... Like what I tell people is it's it's not the way that hot dogs are meant to be enjoyed. You know, mm -hmm. you, <laughs> you know, dunking it in water and shoving it in your and then like choking down hot. No, it's 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 just it's a contest. You know, mm -hmm. so 
it's it's just about getting it down as, as fast as you can. Yeah. Um, Does it taste weird with the water? Like all soggy and yeah, moist? Yeah, <laughs> moist. It is, it is more than moist. It is whew, <laughs> saturated. It's like a sponge. Uh, it, it's a mind over matter thing. Yeah. No, it's, it's uh, not the most appetizing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll, you know, make the water like Kool-Aid flavored or something oh, like yeah, that. Oh, yeah, that's or Lemonade smart. or something like that to make it taste a little better. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, it's, you know, you, you kind of learn a little tricks uh, here and there. I was doing it way wrong when I, when I started. Mm -hmm. you, you wouldn't know there's like different techniques or, or ways of, of doing hot dogs. But, yeah, people would tell me to use on hot water. Uh, I was using just like room temperature, cold water mm -hmm. to to you know dunk. No, using hot water, using flavor ad additives, and you know, really just going as fast as you can. Yeah, yeah. When uh, you make those hot dogs, do you like um, how do you cook them? Do you just boil them? I was boiling them. Yeah, I, I, I would boil them, and I didn't learn until recently. Like maybe that was screwing me over too, because. If you if you grill them or do them on like the blackstone or something like that, they retain more of their oil. But if you boil them, all of that gets lost in the water, and they mm -hmm. go down. They're more dry. So I don't know if that was a mistake or not. I, there's no like you know training manual for such a weird. <laughs> it's not even like I don't. I still feel weird calling it a sport. Yeah. You know. So th there's no like online guide to okay do this that. You just kind of figure it out as you go mm -hmm. along. Dang. Yeah. That's crazy. It, it's it's weird. I know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but if it uh if it got me to where I am now and uh like being able to actually have some like positive like change for, you know, causes that I believe in in local mm -hmm. restaurants, then it's like, okay, it was fun and maybe I'll do it again next year. But mm -hmm. uh <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, so when you when you first started doing uh, competitive eating were a lot of people like freaked out like were your friends and family freaked out or like were they pretty supportive I, I'm, I'm kind of uh, I'm a pretty introverted guy mm -hmm. like I'm, I know I'm already like a little weird a little uh, <laughs> niche uh, uh, um, so when people would talk to me about it yeah it, it was kind of brought up and then just like in passing like mm -hmm. hey saw you did that thing all right buddy <laughs> Good job, you know. I, I, I kind of have a hard time take like taking myself uh, a little too seriously. Mm -hmm. So maybe people read that, and, and I don't know. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I probably make more fun of myself yeah. than other people do, mm -hmm. and then that voice in the back of my head says, you know, they're all making fun of you whenever you leave the room, right? Yeah, I feel like that too. Or yeah. Like when I walk in a room and like somebody's laughing, I'll think they're laughing at me when yeah. they're probably just laughing at like a joke that somebody else told them. Yeah, it's, it's probably the truth, but I don't really know what to do with that voice. It just uh, yeah. suppress it. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, I haven't figured it out either. That's uh, that's what I do. <laughs> is, uh, yeah. yeah. Anyway, I'm really good at making things awkward. So uh, I've never been that you know. Fiery, you know, sunflower, extroverted, like life yeah. of the party. Yeah. So, uh, doing weird stuff like this was just a perfect fit, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, maybe you know, taking myself too seriously. Maybe you know, chugging hot dogs is the perfect <laughs> <laughs> way for me to learn to not do that because it's it's really hard to you know take yourself too seriously when you're shoving hot dogs in your face. You know? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, how was your, like, when you first, like, I guess, came to your wife and told her that you wanted to start doing this, what was her response to it? Uh, she's always been supportive of, like, all my weird stuff. Mm -hmm. um, whenever we we first got pregnant with our, our, our first, um, I, I'm a fan of bodybuilding, another niche sport. Mm -hmm. And I told her I wanted to do a show before our daughter was born. And she was like, cool, whatever. Um, you know, I wanted to trained for a marathon and she was cool with that and do the Augusta half Ironman. And she was mm -hmm. down for that. And this, you know, the same thing she, uh, I mean, I, I get it. Like it's, it's entertainment. So mm -hmm. like she's down for any, anything like, hey, yeah, if that's in Yeah. But also, you know, she loves me. So mm -hmm. of course, like as long as it's not anything that's, you know, harmful or, <laughs> 
expensive or you know yeah. whatever you like know, road sh- racing or something yeah that'd probably like be pretty dangerous or com- yeah that's that's a good example mm-hmm. yeah or if i wanted to run a marathon on the sun or something I, I, <laughs> see i'm not i'm not creative man i'm not i don't have that imagination <clears throat> yeah she she's good and i mean watch the video she gets into it yeah like, i watched the video where she was she was doing it with you yeah it's pretty crazy yeah, yeah. <laughs> i was on my way home i was like all right you know get the water boiling we're gonna train today and she was like i want to do something with you <laughs> i was like for real and she was like yeah I'm, i want to see how much uh she found out some some of the women were qualifying for coney and they ate like seven eight nine hot dogs mm-hmm. within 10 minutes she was like i can do that i can yeah i feel like that's not a lot within yeah. 10 minutes within 10 minutes i mean shoot that's more than she would eat she would eat yeah. like two or three but if it's competitive and you're getting as full as you can mm-hmm. she was like yeah we can i can i can do that she ate four and a half in three and a half minutes so, oh dang you know maybe maybe next year she wants to qualify yeah. she'll have to <laughs> sign a contract though She'll have to sign a contract. You know, shucks. She won't, <laughs> she won't be able to compete. <laughs> yeah. So, like, to go out and do that, to sign the contract, did they reach out to you? Did you re- reach out to them to uh, be a part of it? So, uh, yeah, that, that's a good question. I I, uh, I drove up to Cleveland for a qualifier. That was one of the closest ones. And uh, <laughs> competed with a guy named Nick Weary and Pat Bertoletti. Pat would go on to, to win at Coney Island. So okay. I was just really shooting for third place. There are these two pros there. And um, got third place, ate 30 hot dogs in 10 minutes. That was a, <laughs> it was a personal best. I, I, I really wanted to break that 30 mm-hmm. barrier. Um, and qualified based off of you know, like a, a wild card type mm-hmm. of situation. So I, you have to win a qualifier to get an automatic seat. But uh, uh, all all the the people who didn't win a qualifier, like the next best people, they'll they'll extend an invitation to. Mm. So yeah, I got that email like five or six days before um, Independence Day, for, before Coney Island. Oh dang! So it was kind of a on the spot decision I had to make whether or not I wanted to sign with them yeah. and go have this awesome experience or miss out. <laughs> so. Yeah, it was it was kind of a spur of the moment decision, but mm-hmm. it was a cool experience. That's what's up. And did did you get paid at all for that for going up to Coney Island? They they paid for the um the round trip flight and mm-hmm. a couple of nights in the hotel, um and that was that was a pretty cool payment. Um, but I mean, no, it's not a very lucrative <laughs> line of work being a competitive eater, <laughs> you know, unless you're Joey Chestnut uh, or. I mean, a, a lot of them have YouTube channels, and it's mm-hmm. it's way more lucrative to you know do that and make content than it is to you know once every now and then go win a contest. And I mean, mm-hmm. still some of them offer you know five grand for first place. Oh dang! Um, but if you're only getting first place, you know, a couple times a year, that's still not very <laughs> lucrative. You gotta spread that ten k out. Yeah, out all year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, it's just, it's just for fun. It's yeah. just a competitive thing. Yeah. 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 You also did bodybuilding competitions too. Yeah. Dang. Uh, so, I mean, that's <clears throat> probably, I mean, it's, it's funny how like a lot of people I, I talk to that are, you know, competitive eaters also have backgrounds in, in fitness. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I'm not going <laughs> to, you know, go speculating as to why that is, but, uh, I mean, I, I did obsess about food a lot, you know, during <laughs> bodybuilding and you yeah. calorie restrict and you're eating chicken, broccoli and rice and egg whites and not a whole lot of like stuff you want to eat. So that's actually how I like got into like a lot of the influencers I follow, Randy Santel, Beard Meets Food, uh, Joel Hansen and Molly Schuyler and a lot of these big influencers with uh, food challenges is when I was doing bodybuilding, I would watch their videos mm-hmm. because I couldn't eat the stuff that they <laughs> were. So yeah. it felt good to like watch someone eat a gallon of ice cream and mm-hmm. some fried chicken. Uh, <laughs> and then I would, you know, eat my green beans. <laughs> Dang, man, I wish this was better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You see those videos of someone like sniffing the pizza and then eating the salad. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that was me. That's how I got into them. Yeah. And then uh, yeah, that that skins video came out, and people thought like I was some uh, beard meets food hater. Like oh really? Like I'm 
the opposite. I'm a, a huge fan. Like yeah. I, I, I've been watching them for years. And mm. um, but yeah, that's kind of how I got into yeah bodybuilding. Uh, I it, it's a weird sport. Um, and you know if if you get on my phone, you start scrolling. There's a bunch of like greased up tan <laughs> naked dudes that just like show up on my feed and it's just like a yeah it's it's a weird sport too yeah 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 how long have you been doing that for but uh well i did one show and then after that it's just kind of like maintenance like mm-hmm. i i i eat pretty clean uh i i follow the whole like calories in calories out diet mm. so eat whatever makes you happy if you want to build muscle eat prioritize protein and lifting heavy but uh like i'm not getting ready for a show right now or anything Mm -hmm. i did one back in 2019 and only one so it's just kind of like more the lifestyle that i follow yeah yeah did you win that one how high did you place (laughs) i didn't do that my prep (laughs) only my prep was only you know two and a half months i know it sounds like a lot but usually like prepping for a a show like that and you know are cutting for like four or five months Mm. so i didn't looking back at the pictures now i wish i'd like prepped a little harder um but uh yeah that was i'm sorry what was your question like um how high did you place yeah how high did i place yeah Uh, um, yeah not not that high (laughs) yeah not that high in bodybuilding, it's uh, the, the closer to center stage you are, uh, the better you're doing so that they can compare everybody against you. Mm-hmm. And I was right on the skirts. Like, <laughs> I was almost falling off the stage. Yeah, <laughs> there was no so light far. on you. Yeah, no, <laughs> no. And it was, it was so, like, my family, my, my whole family is super supportive. So my, my, my dear parents and uh, sister were, were all there and had to uh, sit through you know, the women's round, you know, bikini mm-hmm. and all that. And here's here, you know, my parents are in their late sixties and they're watching all these, you know, teeny bopped, you know, greased up tan young women <laughs> waiting for their son to come out on stage in his thong bikini. <laughs> Super proud moment. Um, and they thought, you know, the further off he, uh, he must be in first because everyone is in line behind him. Like, yeah. No dad. No. Nah. <laughs> Nah, I, uh, you know, just, uh, I did all right. It was somewhere in the middle of the pack. Oh, dang. But, I mean, you competed in one, so I feel like that's pretty good. It was, uh, you know, something to check off the bucket list. Yeah. Yeah. Dang. Why do you always have to get all, like, oiled up and tan? Like, why can't y'all go out there looking pale? Right? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I guess it's all to, uh, whatever displays uh, the the definition in the musculature the best so the lights are super bright Mm -hmm. and the background you know you like to have a darker background so there's no so much distraction and Mm -hmm. you know having darker skin helps like i guess with the shadows and you know displaying your conditioning and definition the density of the muscle Mm -hmm. and all the different little things you get judged on whether you, you have good lines or any asymmetries or if your conditioning is bad, you know, I thought my conditioning was awesome because I'd been like cutting for like 10 weeks. <laughs> but some of these guys, it was a natural show, um, but still were able to walk out with this skin that just looked like saran wrap. And I was like, oh, man. Dang. And, yeah. That's crazy. What if you're like red? Because I have like a red um, kind of palette on me. Because yeah. I just burn and then I turn back pale. Yeah, there's a, there, there, there's, there, there's some, you know, ginger uh, bodybuilders. <laughs> They make them look nice and dark, buddy. I mean, you get in that spray tan booth, and they just, they just, yeah, it's 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 it does look kind of weird. Mm-hmm. So, I, I stayed underground for you know two or three days after the show. Yeah, I, I felt like I would get judged super hard if I went out in public looking like you know, I don't know who to compare myself to. They probably think it'd be like a white supremacist or something. Yeah, like, I, I, probably like really I was brown. doing. Uh, what, what, what was that thing they used to do back in the day? Blackface? Yeah. Yeah, I <laughs> like, was looking like that. What's this guy doing? Yeah. This really big buff dude. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just really tan. <laughs> First thing we did afterwards was we went to Waffle House. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I was I was starving, man. Got some raisin toast and some Dang. waffles. and Yeah. Was, you, you should do a Waffle House challenge. We should, man. Yeah. I, I want to do a pancake or a waffle challenge, but mm-hmm. I, I got to find something that's, you know, big enough. Mm-hmm. I went to... Uh, Sunrise Grill in North Augusta and kind of propositioned it. 
Yeah. But like I said, I'm no Mr. Beast. So yeah. <laughs> I think they looked me up and they're like, nah, who's this guy? <laughs> he wants us to make him a giant pancake. Nah. That's a great place. Though. I love that place. Man, yeah, it's awesome. I love that place. Yeah. They're uh, sweet potato pancakes. Mm-hmm. So good. Dang, yeah. Yeah. Man, you know your uh, North Augusta landmarks. Yeah, yeah, I've been there. I mean, I lived, uh, I mean, when I was one to three, I was in, lived in Aiken, but then we moved yeah. to North Augusta. So I've lived there since I was done since, since last year. Yeah. So well, maybe, you, well, I mean, I don't know if you remember being three years old. Maybe you could give me some Aiken recommendations then. Oh, no. We lived like, we lived like way out in the boonies almost. Oh, yeah. 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 So they, we had to move because of like school or whatever. So. Gotcha. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, North Augusta's got pretty decent schools, I guess. Yeah. 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 I right. went to Mossy Creek, Paul Knox, and then North Augusta. North Augusta. I, I I wanted to go to North Augusta for a little bit, but just because of sports. Mm-hmm. I was one of those uh, Augusta Christian kids. Ah, oh, dang. Yeah, dang. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I no, kidding. I get My mom worked there. You know, she oh, okay. got a little bit of a discount, and so I had a ride to school every mm-hmm. day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, which made things real awkward when I was older and wanted to listen to, you know, my music on the yeah. way to school. Y- y'all's yeah. music didn't add up or it didn't match? No, nah, not really. Yeah. You know, something <laughs> you, you'd think like a 16-year-old boy and a 50-year-old woman would have the, the same taste in music. Yeah. But, nah, weirdly, mm-hmm. they don't. Yeah. What, what were you listening to when you were 16? Man, I was so, I don't know. I didn't really have a music <laughs> identity until like after college, but it was uh, Puddle of Mud, if you remember them. Yeah. I'd listen to them. She or, effing hates me. Yeah. Uh, yep. That, that, <laughs> that song would come on. I'd have to get the edited version at least. Yeah. You know, Radio Limp edit, yeah. Limp Biscuit, I remember. That's another one. They're down. on tour right now. Ludacris, are you for real? Yeah. Limp Biscuit is on. Fred Durst is on yeah. tour. Yeah. Where at? Are they, are um, they coming? I think they just. I think they just were in Atlanta. Man, recently. just missed out. Yeah. Man, that'd have been cool. Yeah. That'd have been a dream concert. Like uh, Tenacious D was recently on tour. Oh uh, yeah, but they got in trouble too. <laughs> they got in trouble. Well, uh, that's Jack Black and yeah, the other guy, Kyle right? Kyle Gas, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. So they were on stage, and it was Kyle's birthday. So they were singing him "Happy Birthday," whatever. Then Jack Black was like, like you know, like what's your wish? And then he was like. I wish that they wouldn't have missed Trump or like it was right after the shooting. Oh no. Yeah. Oh, you, yeah. Oh. What was Jack's reaction? Like So we didn't go over that. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was like that. Yeah. And then he came out like a couple of days later and like ban- or quit like ended the tour and then like yeah. kind of threw his best friend under the bus, you know. Bro, yeah. So that, yeah, <laughs> he probably like knew right then. Like, why are you gonna put me in this situation? Yeah, like, it's gonna be that divisive. Maybe they had already had a talk. He's like, I'm gonna say it, <clears throat> and Jack's like, Don't say it, man. Come on, don't say it. I'm gonna say it. Yeah, God, but I don't. I think I don't think Jack Black cared as much. But nah. he, it, it was probably after like all the media was like, Oh yeah, you know, getting after him. He was like, Okay, I have to do something. I can't just yeah because you know. oh, you associate with that. Is, yeah. is 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 that how you feel too? No, I have to. Uh, now denounce you, <laughs> yeah. lifelong friend, <laughs> because of this stupid ass thing that you said. Yeah, dang it, man. <laughs> but I mean, I'm sure they'll come back or whatever. You know, you yeah. know, people they'll get you know, quote unquote, canceled and then come back and yeah. in a couple years time when it'll, everybody forgets about it, it'll so. be fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What about you? Your angsty, regrettable music choices. Um, when I was 16, that was when I was when a lot of rap was coming up, like a yeah. lot of. Um, like SoundCloud rap was coming up. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah. Might have been a little bit too older. Nah, I mean, I, I, I was, I mean, I, I, I honestly like just listened to like YouTube stuff, mm-hmm. um, music on there until or that or like Apple Music. Yeah. Until like, I don't know, recently mm-hmm. with just Spotify. Pretty simple. Yeah, so like a bunch of like Lil Yachty and like guys like that, yeah. like. Um, Lil Uzi Vert, 21 Savage, all those kind of guys. Do you feel like um, you'll ever get to a place to where this is your music and then new stuff will come around, mm-hmm. but you'll just kind of be complacent and like, man, I don't know, if I'm always learning new music. Yeah. Yeah, probably. I mean, for the past, like, since, like, 2019, I've really only been listening to Riff Raff. Do you know who that is? Nah, see, I'm getting old. Uh, well, he he's like a rapper. He, um, he was somewhat 
big in the like 2010s, early yeah. 2010s. The most recent I get is probably uh, like Chance. I, yeah. I, I, love, I love listening to Chance. Um, yeah, that's like 2016 around yeah. the era that he was coming up. Yeah, and like those kind of guys. But um, is NF still cool? Uh, um, I listened to NF for a little bit back in like 2019. Yeah. I listened to a little bit of him. Um, I don't, I don't know. I think, I think some rappers probably call him not real rap because I guess he would be more considered like Christian rap, maybe. Yeah, he doesn't cuss. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, I mean, I've always liked NF. Um, but it's just weird, like how rappers are they're like if you're not talking about doing drugs and killing people then you're not a you real gotta, rapper yeah, you yeah, know yeah you gotta live the stigma yeah in order yeah. to be legitimate yeah is it cliche to say can you even say eminem without people rolling your eyes anymore i i like eminem so i, I mean know. is he is he still <laughs> relevant anymore I, I don't even know like he did just come out with an album this year oh yeah I, I know he just came out with a single shady. yeah houdini yeah that's a good one did you like it i i, I did I, I i'm a a uh, huge fan uh, of what was the album he had a couple albums ago a, a kamikaze yeah 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 uh I, I, probably just because like i played that one on repeat while i was training for the marathon mm-hmm. so i just of course like yeah know, associated with it's that a good one, it's a good album though oh yeah it was, it was good stuff uh yeah he collabed with uh, a lot in that uh i don't know if he collabed with um Juice World on that one or not or um I think it was in the next one it was in uh the I know it was in the song Godzilla yeah yeah but um yeah. I can't I yeah. can't remember the curtain cl- no I don't know I don't remember <laughs> you ever you ever do um karaoke dude I for I did like recently it was my um fiance's little brother's birthday and they had like a karaoke machine that's like the first time I've ever done it before what'd you do I did a lot of Eminem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's got like, okay, I'm going to get this down pat, and then I'm going to get up and spit it, and it's just going to be fire, and everyone's going to lose their shit. Yeah. And it, and it never turns out that way because when it comes <laughs> up, you're like five beers in, and you're slurring your words, and there's no way that you could do Godzilla or Rap God. <laughs> yeah. And like – I was I was with my fiance's family and like she has all sisters and like a little brother. So like it was me and then like five of her sisters and stepsisters and then her mom. So like they wanted to do like Shania Twain. It oh, was kind of like girly yeah. songs. I don't really know them. I mean they're good songs. But I just don't. I can't like karaoke. Dude, those. I, I mean that '90s diva that mm-hmm. that genre too. Man, I. I it's, I got to be in a mood. Yeah. But man, I'll, I'll blare that too. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> That's the one they like. Let's go, girls. <laughs> uh, yeah. A lot of Mariah. Mm-hmm. She, yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I think it's whenever we started having girls, Disney got pushed so hard that mm-hmm. I would just like look for any other like music. So mm-hmm. I guess. I just wanted to play like '90s divas. Like, yeah. Okay. Here, here's we can listen to some Cranberries and Mariah, Whitney Houston, oh, with yeah. Tori Amos, mm-hmm. and all this. We don't got to listen. I mean, Disney. No, I mean a little bit of hate for <laughs> Disney, but I just wish it would shrink back down to the size it was when I was a little kid. Yeah. You still had like Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network, and all this mm-hmm. other like weird abstract stuff. Nowadays, kids just like feel like they just got Disney and Pixar. That's yeah, funny. yeah. And I feel like Disney owns Pixar almost. Uh, yeah, mate. Do they? D- they D- own ESPN. They own all the stuff. They own Marvel. They own Star Wars. They pretty sure they own probably National Geographic. And they probably made this microphone. Yeah, they probably did somehow. I don't know. They had some type of role in making it. Man, I don't oh know. man, yeah. They're like almost becoming a legal monopoly. They they are. <laughs> they Dude. own Fox too. Like. Not Warner Brothers Fox, but um, or the new station. I don't know what Fox it is, but it's one of them. They scare me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I mean, hey, they make great movies for kids. Yeah, I think they have ruined a lot of Marvel movies lately, though. Did yeah. you ever get big into Marvel? My wife is huge into it. Oh yeah. Yeah, I tend to gravitate towards like the more like artsy fartsy mm-hmm. type of movies, <laughs> and she we balance each other out in that mm-hmm. aspect. So yeah. she. We get to whenever we do do movie movie nights, like she takes a turn, I take a turn. Mm. Um, but she, yeah, she used to get big into the Marvel. Yeah, yeah. What, what's a movie you would pick for movie night for you? Uh, <laughs> one that uh, I've been wanting us to watch is, is like this weird foreign film called Babette's Feast. It's Babette's a, Feast. It's an old like Norwegian movie mm-hmm. where this 
woman gets sold to a family to be a cook and then wins the lottery and spends everything to throw every everyone like this big banquet <laughs> feast. Oh, and, dang. Yeah. It, it's, uh, but let's see, the last one we saw, I, uh, you know, since kids, we don't really get out that much and we're not really up to date, but I, I think it was a Marvel movie. She used to be like, she knew the, 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 the all the chronicles. She was yeah. up to date on everything, and it's weird to say hey, we haven't done that in a while. Mm -hmm. You get big into it. Um, I did for a little bit. I remember like in the 2010s when they were coming out with like the first stuff, like yeah. Iron Man, the Hulk. Yeah, that's when it was really good. But like since I think after Disney bought Marvel, it's become very. Um, political i feel like yeah and they just try to yeah they really try to force stuff yeah and it's like don't force it just like have it become natural it's not even subliminal anymore yeah it's not it, and it's, it's just, just like in your face yeah um i mean they still have some good stuff like guardians of the galaxy 3 yeah you know they they sometimes hit but i feel like a lot of them that was the last misses. one we saw guardians of the galaxy 3 yeah w was that the one with like the big sad moment at the end where uh what's the wrecking rocket Let's all the little, little baby raccoons go that were, and maybe that was the previous one. Maybe I, sure. I haven't seen that one yet, but I have heard it's really good. Yeah, there was there was it was it was a big um, symphonic finale at the very end. Mm -hmm. You know, just a bunch of like feel good emotions just yeah. just flooding, and you're just like, wow. Yeah, yeah. it probably was that one. It yeah. probably was that one. Yeah. But I don't, know. I don't know. Chris Pratt, you know, he's. I mean, how can you not? He's so dreamy. Yeah. So he's he's like, he's he's like, uh, I don't know. Jack Black, uh, I mean, Tenacious D, uh, I, I love me some Jack Black, but Chris Pratt does kind of like give me Jack Black vibes every now and then. Just, yeah. You know. Yeah, I feel like um, as far as like personality wise, they're probably pretty similar. Yeah. <laughs> he's just fully committed goofy. Yeah. Yeah. Not even a, like, not like the awkward goofy, just like this is who I am mm -hmm. and I own it. Yeah. yeah. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> So you trained for marathons. How many marathons have you run? One. Man? Oh, really? <laughs> One and done. It seems like that for everything. Man. Yeah. So not I, eating though. Not You're eating. You're definitely in that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it was uh, Myrtle Beach a couple of years ago, and uh, that was kind of while I was training for the half Ironman. I hate that qualifier half. Like I want to do a full one one day so I can mm -hmm. stop saying the word half. It just yeah. kills me every time. Um, and I really love running, and. I loved it because I like I hate it. I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah, it I was. Get that. It felt like a sense of accomplishment because mm -hmm. I, I hated it so much. But afterwards, I'd be like, I did something that I did I really really didn't want to do. Mm -hmm. So, uh, like, I signed up for an ultra this year, and I started running into knee problems. It was a hundred mile marathon down in Florida. Oh, dang! Where you run from David Goggins. <laughs> That dude screwed me up, man. <laughs> Don't read that book unless you're ready to commit to that lifestyle. Yeah, I got I got both of them right there. <laughs> oh man, yeah. I uh, <laughs> oh he came out with another one. Yeah. Shoot, I gotta get that one then. Dang, coming. <laughs> I read that book and I was like, "Yep, sold. Let's do this." And then there's so many stories in that book where he just like runs through the pain, mm -hmm. but that will really mess you up. Uh, yeah. and I would do that and then ran into knee problems. And, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I want to get back into it one day. So yeah. reading, are you, are you a runner yourself? Um, I did run for a little bit. Um, I have done, I've done a marathon, not officially. Like I just did it like in yeah. North Augusta. Uh, you just I've, ran out, like went out and ran 26 miles? Yeah, because um, that was the beginning of 2023 and then back in 2022 i had a guest on that has done a lot of that stuff he did an ultra he did uh, a full triathlon he's done marathons all that kind of stuff so like wow. it motivated me and that was right around the time i read the david goggins book so it was like yeah. double whammy so i was like oh crap so he made a thing for that year like a new year's resolution to do like 100 miles a month so like for january i did 100 miles a month and mm -hmm. then february i was about to hit it but somehow it all came out the last miles i had to run was a full marathon it's on the last day so like i had to you know commit and do it and then because like you <laughs> you like procrastinated so you're like i gotta get it in i gotta run like 26 miles today i don't i don't know what it was i can't remember if i did do that i probably did because i procrastinate a lot yeah. but um it, i probably did do that but then i have done a half marathon officially yeah um but the medals are cool yeah they're uh, heavy too. People ask me like, "Why you got to pay a hundred, couple hundred dollars sometimes mm -hmm. for for sign up fee?" 
and then drive somewhere to go run. Mm-hmm. Can't you just do that in your bed? I don't know. There's like a sense of community. I remember the one that I did, I was really nervous. It was in Myrtle Beach. Mm-hmm. And I, I remember getting up to the starting line and like everyone was there and I just kind of felt at ease. Yeah. I felt like I was, you know, part of this big party. Mm-hmm. And the t-shirt, yeah, and the medal, the <laughs> finishing medal, that's, that's nice too. But I don't know, just you did something. Yeah. But yeah, you can totally go down to the Greenway and just run 26 miles if mm-hmm. you want to. Yeah, that's what I did. Yeah. Well, that's dude, a good place to do it. Yeah, 20 miles in, dude. Like, first 10 weren't too bad because I had been running before a lot. And then, like, I was getting, like, past 10. I was like, okay, this is getting a little harder. It's getting a little harder. Yeah. And then I, like, brick walled at 20. I, like, my legs started hurting really bad. And then, but I just had to, you know, c- keep pushing, Jeez. I guess. <laughs> It's it's a lot of planning that goes in. Like, mm-hmm. there's a big difference going out for like a five mile jog, versus you're going running for a couple hours. You mm-hmm. got to have like nutrition, electrolytes, water planned. Yeah. If you go down to the Greenway and you're expecting the water fountains to work and they don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I stopped at the gas station right there. The yeah. uh, the old Greg's Gas Plus. Yeah, yeah, But it's yeah. a Sprint now, or yeah. it used to be a Four Seasons. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah. It was a Four Seasons gas station. Then it was a Greg's, and then it was um. Now it's a sprint. But yeah, I got there. I like drank a ghost energy drink. Yeah. I got some like electrolytes and I kept going. Yeah. So, that's, I mean, it's <laughs> do what you got to do. Yeah. But, I mean, for the, the 100 mile ultra, they require you to have like your own crew mm-hmm. to go down and like every three or four miles, you know, have something to eat, have something to drink. You know, it gets hot. So have something to cool you down. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's different, uh, you know, running three or four versus a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It changes socks. Yeah. It changes shoes because yeah. they get saturated. Yeah. They get moist. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, another thing. He was He's talking about running these ultras and, like, by himself. But a lot of people... Yeah, you can't who, do that now. Yeah. Like, a lot of the times people do it in groups. Mm-hmm. So, like, you, like how you said, like, three miles, then switch out or whatever. Yeah. But, like, I think when people first started read that, reading that book and didn't know anything about it, they're like, oh, I have to run 100 miles now, like, by myself? Yeah. So, like, I don't know. It's, it's, I mean, it's... I, one, David Goggins is a badass. Yeah. He's, uh, I mean, that, that needs to be said first. But two, it's a dangerous message. Because yeah. a lot of people will go out there and they'll feel pain mm-hmm. and they'll like channel their inner Goggins and then run through it. And now you have a hard <laughs> time walking for the next three months. Yeah. They have and, a $20,000 medical bill you yeah. got to pay for or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're not all Goggins. Yeah. You, know, yeah. you still got to go to work in the morning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I did kind of have like a phase, and I try to I try to work out regularly, but um, it feels good. Yeah, to have some sort of activity. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't. What I tell people, it doesn't have to be the gym. Mm-hmm. I mean, but like have some sort of activity. If it's just walking, or it can be mm-hmm. golf, or disc golf, or rock climbing, or you know, I don't know, whatever. Maybe you like to train dogs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, but I mean, I like the gym. It mm-hmm. Makes me feel good. Activity's good. But it's hard, you know? Yeah. But it feels better after. Yeah, but that's, like, the whole point, you know, yeah. like, sticking to, like, a discipline, sticking to, like, a schedule and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. So. I mean, there's, there's training that goes along with this, too. Uh, it, it, it's, uh, it sucks. I hate it. I, I like the gym way better. <laughs> training that goes into this, it, uh, you, you don't feel good. You, yeah, it just – so, I mean – Whenever I first started, the stomach had, like, a certain capacity that was already, like, bigger than normal. Mm-hmm. But in order to get it, you know, big enough to, you know, be able to compete, that's that's something that you train for. Yeah. And it's not, like, going to the gym. It's, you know, like, I, I put up a couple of videos about, uh, like, the capacity training that I'll do. And it's just, like, a lot of low-cal stuff and mm-hmm. then a lot of water on top of it. Yeah. Like a salad a bunch of cucumbers some watermelon and then a, a bunch of like mixed veggies a bunch of low-cal stuff mm-hmm. seven eight nine pounds of that and then mm-hmm. drink you know a gallon of water on top of it um, yeah and i hate it man yeah <laughs> i hate it i i get nervous my heart start racing mm-hmm. b- beforehand because uh, i know it, it's gonna hurt and it feels bad but it's 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 part of training you know mm-hmm. so yeah you know. so you do that half uh, Iron, or you did the Iron Man as well? Yeah. The I did. one that they did at Augusta, they closed everything down for it. Yeah. Sorry <laughs> about the traffic on those days. I've thought about doing it, but like the bikes are so expensive. Right? It's, like, a, rich, it's a rich person's sport. I know. It's like $2,000 for a good bike. Bro. I mean, my wife, with 
little girls, you know, and how expensive daycare and you know yeah. food and all that is. We had to have a discussion before. I bought a used bike off a of marketplace for a thousand bucks, and <laughs> even then, she was like, "We we get this bike. You're doing this race. Yeah, you, I, you're, there's no backing out, buddy. Uh-huh. You get this." And I was like, "Yes, ma'am." So, <laughs> yeah, it's expensive, but that was like a cheap used one. You mm. can spend fourteen, fifteen grand on a bike if you want to, and. Uh, you know, wetsuits and running gear. I mean, if you're running that long, you're going through shoes every two or three months. They're yeah. 160, 180 bucks a pop. Yeah. It's Dude, a, I bought some on clouds and they're like 130 bucks. Bro, yeah. They're expensive. Yeah. I was in Fleet Feet. Like, they, they knew me by yeah. name. Yeah, that's where I got mine too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it is kind of a rich person sport. And mm-hmm. I mean, uh, a, I don't want to say leisure because it doesn't feel very leisurely, but you got to have a lot of time on your hands. Yeah. If you're going to go ride a, a bike for a couple hours and mm-hmm. then go for a run for a couple hours. Yeah. That's another yeah. thing. Like David Goggins, like he, like that's all he did, you know, know, like he didn't really do anything else. So like people think that they can do all the things he's doing yeah. and also like do the stuff they need to do. Yeah. And like, I don't know. He doesn't really talk much about his, home life or mm-hmm. his kids or his exes but i'm sure it definitely had an impact so yeah. if you're trying to have a regular life it's probably not wise to go run for you know hours every day mm-hmm. and then you're exhausted and i mean he talks about it in the book then he spends another couple hours every day stretching yeah like two hours a night like who yeah. has time for that he's just <laughs> unavailable yeah i mean right like i I got diapers to change. I got, <laughs> I got meals to make. I got yeah. a job to show up at. Yeah. So. And then it's not really that profitable either. Like even if nah. like it's you should probably tank yourself nah. finance wise if you're he, not winning every single one. Everyone knows Gog. Oh, there's a prize for winning. Oh uh, well, maybe I guess not. <laughs> I, I don't know if there is or not. I know like uh, he says during the peak of his like training and career, he was doing ultras almost every weekend. Yeah. I can't. Dude, again, David Goggins is the badassest of all the badasses. Mm-hmm. Uh, so props, but like, dude, I can't imagine. Like, he he must have just been unavailable all year. Yeah, uh, running like that. He's also a motivational speaker, so he was mm-hmm. traveling around and doing these motivational speeches yeah. at places that where he would run. But uh, yeah, dude, he's just a he's just a freak of nature. Yeah, I guess he had to sell some books to make some of that money back. That's, that's right. Man. <laughs> Get out of debt, maybe pay yeah. some cars off or something. I don't know. I wonder if he's like screwed himself over so much to where if he did ever want to just like take it easy mm-hmm. and just be a normal person at Whole Foods. Yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> he's not going to be able to because people are just going to hold him to that high level for his whole life, mm-hmm. and he's going to be running ultras when he's ninety-four years old. Yeah, that's another thing. He set the bar for himself so much to where it's like, if he's not doing this, people are going to think, oh, he's washed up yeah. or he's old or and whatever. And he's such a public figure. Yeah, everywhere <laughs> he goes, people are going to be like, why ain't you training? Did you train today? Did yeah. you do a million push-ups this morning? Yeah. No. <laughs> I did that for so long. I really just want to take it easy. <laughs> no, come on, you're goggles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. That's that's a crazy lifestyle to live. I definitely, I mean, I would like to live a little bit of it. You know, uh, I just like, believe in balance. Man. Yeah, yeah, but like you got to have balance. You know. Yeah. That's that's another thing I thought about. Like for like people who make gym content or whatever, like people who do it, like. That's that's literally their job. So that's all they do. You yeah. know, like I know a lot of people probably have jobs and they probably get discouraged because they don't go to the gym as much. But it's like they see these people hitting going to the gym all the time. But like that's that's like their job. That's like what yeah. they do. You know. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, what what real people can really do is what what you wind up seeing is like this in and out type of diet lifestyle. Okay, well, I, I got a couple of months of, you know, time motivation. Mm-hmm. But you're right. These people that, you know, are ripped to shreds and oiled up, like mm-hmm. they're, they're content creators and yeah. they've got millions of followers. So that's their job. It's lucrative enough to where they mm-hmm. don't have to, you know, show up at work in the morning. If you got a job and a family, <laughs> like you're, yeah. you're good, man. If, mm-hmm. if you're not obese, like 
get 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 the workout in when you can. Get your ten thousand steps a day in. Mm-hmm. Try to take care of your diet, but yeah. shoot, you ain't got to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. yeah, or it's like Chris Bumstead isn't going to do HVAC every day. You no, know? no, like he's, he's not. Man. <laughs> like he's yeah. he's working out, making content, and he's gonna make money off of that. Yeah. So I mean, and it's not to take away any of the struggle or the yeah, grind they had because in order to get there, they were at one point nobody. Mm-hmm. And they had to struggle and hustle and grind really hard to probably like make content and pursue a hobby and work a full time job at the same time. Mm-hmm. But they have gotten to a place to where it is easier through all the struggle and hustle that they had to do in the early days. Mm-hmm. So I mean, yeah, it's possible. Like you don't don't just like hear that and like give up on the on the hustle. Mm-hmm. But um the people that we model ourselves after you know, aren't living that life anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, they probably did, but not anymore. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's like when millionaires talk about poverty. Like, you're yeah. a millionaire. What do you mean poverty? <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me tell you, back in my day, yeah, that's one thing. Is like, dude, the, the economy that worked for people like 30, 40, 50 years ago is not the economy mm-hmm. today. No. If you'd have told me like 10, 15 years ago that I'd be thinking about spending 400 grand on a middle class house <laughs> that in North Augusta <laughs> and it wasn't gonna be a mansion. Mm-hmm. I'd been like, what, what no, that's crazy. <laughs> that's insane. That would never happen. You know, like my parents bought an a kick ass house to raise four kids in for like a quarter of what I'm <laughs> thinking about spending for half the home. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah, it's a different economy today. It's harder to be a millionaire starting from nothing now than, you know, I think ever. Mm. Don't quote me on that. It's probably easier. I don't know. I mean, with I'm scamming stupid. and everything, I mean, it's probably easy. Yeah. A lot is. of people scam, bro. There's there's a lot of wealth out there. Yeah. 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 yeah a lot it's of money to easy. be made. I don't know. I mean, I feel like it would be ethically, if you were to do everything ethically right and not screw anybody over, it would probably be really hard. Yeah. You know? but like some people, they don't care about other people. They'll they'll unethically make millions of mo- millions of dollars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. Uh, like right now, uh, I make enough money to kind of, I mean, you see what I'm wearing. I mean, I don't, <laughs> I, of course I, I'd like an updated wardrobe, a nicer house, a nicer car, whatever. Who, who doesn't? Yeah. Um, but m- most of what I'm doing and, and trying to like get monetized on YouTube, especially is like, is, is just to be able to help out restaurants. I love yeah. food. Mm-hmm. food. Food is my love language. And I do. I, I don't. I don't know any food out there that I don't like. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the people who share that love language with me, that want to care for others through, like, making good food. That's that's all that I want to do is just like helping prop pe- these people up instead of these multinational corporations that mm-hmm. sell terrible food for <laughs> just a little bit cheaper. Yeah. Like helping support local people mm-hmm. that make awesome food they love it and they love the people and they live here they're us yeah that's that's all i want to do and uh, like i'd give every cent back that i make trying to help those people out uh, mm-hmm. so that's that's kind of the end goal right now yeah, yeah. Well, thank you man I, I was gonna ask you like what do you what's like, the next future like but i think you just answered it yeah uh <laughs> um, i just shot some content with have usry down at um fat man's I've got some more coming up uh, locally, and there's there's challenges like in the Georgia Carolina area that I'm mm. looking to do. But my main goal right now is just getting monetized on YouTube and growing my channel so that I can create positive change for uh, these people locally that I believe in. Yeah. Uh, well, thank yeah. you, man. What's uh What's your socials? Uh, so I'm on Facebook, William Lyon, and primarily I know because you know I'm. I'm going to be 40 in a couple of years. Uh, so uh, there's that. And uh, main thing is YouTube and uh, uh, lying around on, on YouTube, L-Y-O-N mm-hmm. around. Uh, I make food content and try to do fitness stuff every now and then, but it's 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 mainly food. It celebrates food. It's food challenges. Yeah. And uh, What I about put, the lion's den? Lion's den. My, my wife wants to have, like, a big sign made and put it up in yeah. our kitchen of the lion's den. Yeah, yeah. that would be pretty cool. Yeah, I, I, I was just trying to find one that wasn't already taken. So, mm. And I like to lion around and 
we're coming out with merch soon. A hundred percent of the proceeds is going to go to Golden Harvest Food Bank. Oh, that's so sad. Um, and links on for that will be uh, up on uh, Printify. Uh, but yeah, just slowly growing and you know trying to have a little bit of positive change locally. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you, man. I appreciate you coming on, man. Thanks for wanting me, man. Yeah. This was awesome. Yeah, I saw you on the disgusted thing, and I was like, what is this dude doing? Uh, weird then, stuff. Yeah. <laughs> weird stuff. And then I saw you eating all that stuff. I was like, that's cool. I've never seen anyone else do that in the area. So Yeah. It's it, Is it a talent? I don't know, man. A lot of people see it, and they're like, man, that guy's just pigging out. And they're like, yeah, I, I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But you know, if it gets views and gets people in the door and in the in the booths, then mm -hmm. that's that's all I really yeah. care about. Well, yeah, man. Thank thank you again for uh, coming on. I appreciate it. Thanks, man. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for listening. Uh, I appreciate it, and uh, we'll see you next time. Got my soul in a choke. I feel I can't breathe. Keep my foot on the gas. My life in full speed. Feel like I.